Hello, welcome to another video of this SPA Design YouTube channel. And in this video, I will really kick off the start of my kind of my personal journey through kind of trying to study on the automotive history and the trends that were set, the technology that was used in the time, and just all of those type of things to kind of help me get a better understanding of what is happening today. Because I feel like if you kind of have an understanding of what's happening in the past, you can kind of use that to predict not even predict the future but you know history always repeats itself so that is what I will uh, kind of do this video series around and I will kind of divide this video in pieces and th these pieces will be kind of errors in time uh, which I feel are relevant enough to talk about so this first video will be about just everything that happened up to the um, let's say the 19th century so the 1800s and everything below that and then afterwards we talk about um, let's say everything pre-war, so from 1900 to uh, let's say 1945, maybe 19, yeah, something like that. And then afterwards we will do, um, hmm, that's kind of an interesting period, I think 1945 up to let's say 1970, and then afterwards we do 1970s, just the complete 70s, 80s, 90s, 10s, uh, no, zeros first and then 10s, and then uh, we'll do present and after the present day I will kind of just give you my thoughts on what I think will be the future after having discussed all of it that already took place because we can then kind of round off everything and uh, draw some conclusions so um, yeah I think that this would be that will be the way to do it so to kick it off I'll kind of um, we first need to find out what the purpose is of a car and then and why it was created, why it was developed, why it was invented and I think the best way to do that is to just look at it for what it is it's a device that will get you from place A to place B that's what it is basically in its most basic form so before that we wanted to have a faster rate of traveling uh, if we go back to like uh, prehistoric humans they learned how to ride horses and everything so they uh, there was a, a better way to travel for a longer time at a higher speed and afterwards they wanted to get maybe a little bit more comfortable and they had carriages behind these horses and the horse was kind of the powertrain the engine of that carriage and then afterwards there was in 1672 i believe there was a chinese engineer uh, that um he made for a chinese emperor he made a carriage for that was a horse carriage but he converted it and put a very small steam engine on it and I don't know where this steam engine originated from but he found a way to kind of connect the two and so instead of put a horse in front of it to put a steam engine in front of it but it was just made as a toy it wasn't really a serious device to get from A to B so these carriages kind of kind of had everything the facilities for to keep humans uh, dry in a, some sort of a safe configuration and um, so the earliest cars that were really just set up to look like carriages and they put steam engines because that is what uh, a power source that was available at the time so the first device that we know of that was used to power these uh, carriages that used to be horse and horse carriages or whatever um, we know them as steam engines or external combustion engines and most of you will probably know what the internal combustion engine is and the difference between the two is that with a steam engine there is combustion that's taking place outside of the cylinder wall of an engine but that is an internal combustion engine and this combustion is heating up water and it's turning it into steam and this pressure will lead to uh, will be channeled towards a piston and that piston will be pushed back and forth and then it will be attached to a crankshaft to get it rotating and to push it back and forth will um, this will be done with steam water pressure and everything so the combustion is taking place outside of the piston cylinder wall so that's why it's an external combustion engine after these steam engines were being placed onto these carriages to uh, kind of get people traveling at higher speeds and all of that people were kind of uh, there was even people there were even people that were kind of afraid of the idea of people traveling over 35 miles an hour it was a really a scare that people had because they thought that the human body uh, was just not capable of it and um, <laughs> that's actually a fact that's pretty funny to me but, uh, but after people got accustomed to it 
they started to develop more and more and more and um, there was eventually, I believe in 1907, but we'll talk about it in the next episode, there was a steam car that actually ended up going 107 miles an hour. I think that was the land speed record of that car uh, in that period. But um, I'll do some more research and it will be for the next episode in the pre-war cars. So, actually at this time, um, there were also already, and we're talking 18, I believe 1850 somewhere, there were already also some electric cars. There were, um, as stupid as it sounds, there were actually electric cars already before there were actually internal combustion engine cars. So uh, it's actually a pretty, it's an older concept than the regular car. And it's also another, another pretty weird thing to uh, kind of comprehend. But as soon as the Tesla configuration uh, electric motor came out, they also started to produce these to use them on actual cars and because a lot of people were still using uh, horses and carriages at the same time these car companies kind of figured out a way uh, they needed a way to figure out how to um, market these cars with uh, uh, other um, powertrains other configurations to propel these cars than horses how to market them towards the public and how to get the public involved with it and to get them to trust it and all of that. So they came out with the term horsepower. And horsepower, as you may notice, there are a couple of different variations. There is like British PS, there is European metric horsepower, and there also is American horsepower. And um, these are different because these different companies that were producing these cars were kind of lying about how many horses this um, this one single car could replace so that's also um, one of these strange things in history that these people were doing so if you heard the term like it, uh, McLaren 675 LT the 675 stands for 675 PS so that is uh, British horsepower but in America I believe the thing is 666 horsepower and that doesn't have to do anything with it produces another amount of horsepower when it's in a different country or whatever that is just um, the consequence of the people that were used to running these old car companies that were lying about how many horses this car would replace if you would upgrade your horse for a car at the time so that is where that comes from so we had the external combustion engine and we had these electric cars that were running at the time and these electric cars were very inefficient with their electricity of course because at that time you didn't really know how to make an efficient battery the way we do it right now so those cars were very heavy and they didn't really long for a long period of time and um, these steam cars were also not very efficient because the way the external um, it's the way to heat up this water and everything was not really running efficiently they used a lot of coal and all of that so these weren't really the best solutions to a problem of how to transport multiple people at a certain speed so after that period of time there was a man called Carl Benz and that is not his real real name I believe he was born with a different name but he was a German scientist and of course he then later on that company um, became, as we know right now, Mercedes-Benz. And they were actually the first company to make uh, be, uh, gasoline engines. And they were first were two-stroke engines and later on they worked on the process of making it a four-stroke engines. And that is what we know the auto motor right now. So um, that is the, the suck, squeeze, bang, blow theory. And um, those engines and if you don't know what I when what I mean when I say suck, squeeze, bang, blow, that is the four-stroke period. So it, as soon as the piston comes down, then it's sucking in air. When it's uh, going up again, it's squeezing it air together, creating pressure and heat in that piston in the cylinder wall, and then it goes blow. So the uh, spark plug initiates, it ignites everything, and then when it comes up again, it blows everything out. So that is suck, squeeze, bang, blow. Um, so that is why kind of that. So after that came out, there was a more efficient way to get a car moving. So Carl Benz then made a three-wheeler with a single piston motor. And that single piston motor created 0 0.9 horsepower, so uh, European horsepower, at 400 RPM. So it was really turning very slowly. But at that point in time, that was just the, the way to get from point A to point B. So then in the late 1800s, we had 
three available types of cars. We had steam cars, electric cars, and these internal combustion engine cars, these uh, gasoline powered machines. And at this point in time, actually electric cars were responsible for over 25% of the complete car market. So, but the complete car market was very small. There was just a select group of people that could really afford these things and all of that. So, but um, if you were kind of be able to maintain it and also invest more time and money at that point in time in these electric cars and not just start doing it right now, we would be way farther ahead at this point in time. But throughout history, throughout the car revolution, we will kind of see me um, talk about these electric cars more and also some interesting people that were involved with it and um, kind of saw what this technology offered for the people. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed the content. I hope you guys look forward for the next couple of episodes. I will be doing more research, diving into the kind of weird stories and um, topics that I feel are uh, interesting and need to be told more and need to be talked about more. And um, I, that is just what this series is going to be about. And at the end of it, I will probably, uh, I don't know, maybe kind of put everything together and try to make uh, some sort of small documentary about it. But I don't really want to. Uh, then I would have to find a lot more uh, video footage too because I don't think that a lot of people will kind of look at this the whole time. So thanks for watching. Please leave a like and also subscribe to this YouTube channel. I'm Shaquille Feldbaum. This is the history of the automobile. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. I'm out.